now. So if you're watching the video, obviously you've probably clicked on something that says Tesla coil, which means you're infinitely smarter than I am already. So what we're going to do is actually go downstairs and see a homemade Tesla coil firing that I get to play with. So its inventor can uh, videotape everything. And so I get shocked, and he stands around to be able to fix whatever happened Plus that was wrong to begin with. So uh, let's head downstairs. I'll introduce you to Daniel Short, the actual Plus creator of the Tesla coil. Well, no, this Tesla coil, not the creator of Tesla coils. And uh, we'll see if we can have a little bit of fun. We may want to mention that this is a dungeon. <laughs> no, this is like new meaning to the scientific lair. Okay. What do we have here? Is there anything you want to say, Jim? If you're recording, I'll let you do the same. Give me, give me the camera. Okay. Since you know what you're talking about. Okay, this is um, my fifth Tesla coil, and I think it's by far probably one of the best ones that I've done. Um, I have here the capacitor bank. Um, I have this as a weight to keep the contacts there um, appropriately connected. And this is about 11 picofarads, which causes this uh, Archimedes spiral right here to resonate at about the eight to seven to eight turns. They resonate together. Um, it's about, I think it's about 300 milli Henry. And this is our neon sign transformer, 12,000 volt, uh, 30 milliamp. And this, of course, is the secondary winding. It's a 24 inch, about 725 turns, with a 18, a 13 to 18 picofarad top load. And uh, it pretty, it pretty, it's got nice ribs on it, so it throws out some six, I guess, six to eight inch uh, arcs. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the lights, and we're gonna at least we're gonna turn down this light, and then. John, you're going to play with it while we try not to blow up my camera? Or die. <laughs> or die. And, okay, here, John. Here's a, you here's don't have a, a... You don't have a jack out here to plug up to, do you? No, that's the only ones. Okay. Yeah, camera's still working. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, uh, the question was whether the camera was still alive. The reason being, as it's been explained to me, you, you'd notice that the light that I was holding was actually lighting up long before we actually put it close enough to the Tesla coil for any electricity to jump back and forth. And that's because the area of about let's say five feet or so around the Tesla coil is actually putting off enough RF energy to actually cause the light to operate, to illuminate. So uh, anything around that area obviously is going to be affected, as we said, by a very, very strong magnetic field and therefore we had to have the camera back far enough so that it wouldn't. Yeah, sorry for the graininess of the film because it did get grainy there because of the light circumstance. Oh, so it did have some interference even as far back as, yeah. what, 15 feet? Yeah. Cool deal. It might have been just because there wasn't enough light for it to capture well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video.